ಆಪ್ಯಾಯಂತು ಮಾಂಗಿ ವಾಕ್ಪ್ರಾಣಶ್ಚಕ್ಷುಶ್ರೋತ್ರಮಥೋ ಬಲಮಿಂದ್ರಿಯಿ ಚರ್ವಾಣಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೌಪನಿಷದ ಮಾಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕುರ್ಯಾಂ ಮಾಮಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರಾಕರೋತ್ ಅನಿರಾಕರಣಮಸ್ತ್ವ ನಿರಾಕರಣ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ತು ತದಾತ್ಮನಿ ನಿರತೆಯ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ಧರ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ತೇ ಮಯಿ ಸಂತು ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 when mithya is known as such meaning when mithya is known as mithya then it is a lot of fun we can play in the world of mithya like even ishvara does it becomes leela a kind of a krida play a play with uh, you know a play which which is backed by a self awareness that i am not a part of this that i stand apart from this i am an observer not a participant and even if i participate i participate in this world without becoming a participant i am an as though participant and you know in the colloquial sense we say such and such a person when we talk about saints etc we say such and such a person is you know is in this world but not of this world that's exactly the idea if mithya is known as a dependent reality that is that you know that is depending on me i have to cognize each and everything in the universe sentient and in sentient i am the cognizer of that and there is only one source of sentience consciousness sat that is me and if this is known then mithya is a lot of fun one can be like a mother with a young child who is throwing a tantrum from the standpoint of the young child everything is so serious this one hit me this one took away my toys i am angry i want i don't want to come out of the toy shop i want to be here i have to have this this particular object whatever that is without it i am dead and the mother just smiles she is experienced she knows <laughs> she knows the child she knows this you know she she she's she actually enjoys the tantrum of the child without taking it too seriously a good mother a functional mother is able to have that space and if the child says no i have to have this right now and uh, i want to play the mother knows the child is actually sleepy or hungry this is not the time for play and uh, and very gently you know she will she will parent the child so that it will get uh, distracted from from the tantrum and it will come out of the tantrum this is exactly what needs to happen to the inner child in order to enjoy mithya as mithya this is exactly what needs to happen because there is a uh, you know when we talk about mithya there, there is there are two parts to it a and b so one mithya is what we have been talking about ishwara's creation ishwara's manifestation into of this sat into various names and various forms this is this is something we have talked about at length word and meaning pot, you know pot and lid and cup and all these things using these examples we have talked about this at length so this is one mithya which cannot be removed in fact which need not be removed as i said if it is known as mithya it is enjoyable but why do i come under the spell of mithya why is it that i don't know mithya as mithya 
even though i am attending satsangs regularly and teacher after teacher is underscoring the same thing <laughs> teacher after teacher is saying the same thing book after book is say, uh, saying the same thing how come i keep getting trapped by mithya the answer to that is is mithya part b <laughs> Mithya part B is one's own personal mithya. The first mithya is, it is there. Therefore, I see it. It means X, whatever it is, X. Object X is there. Therefore, I see it. This is the first kind of mithya. Ishvara's creation, it is there. Sunrise, there. Therefore, I see it. And then ocean there therefore i see it trees there therefore i see them other people there therefore i see them and then what else there are so many things you know hills mountains rivers lakes they are all there you cannot say that they are not there as i said mithya doesn't mean false we have another word for false, like the example that was given, the horns of a rabbit. That is non-existence. Mithya doesn't mean non-existent. Mithya means it is a dependent reality. It is all dependent on something and another thing and another thing until you go straight to Bhagavan, whose roots and whose, uh, tr uh, whose roots cannot be traced. A cause, less cause, which is Ishvara. This is Mithya. So, Living in this mithya, one need not come under its spell if the second kind of mithya is taken care of. What is the second kind of mithya? I see it, therefore it must be there. See the difference? The first one, it is there, therefore I can see it, I can hear it, I can objectify it. In the second instance, I see it, therefore it must be there. This is what is called a mistaken perception. Like even the snake. What kind of snake? Of course, our wonderful Vedanta example, rope snake. What other kind is there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> a very, very funny thing happened to one of our brahmacharis in the ashram. And... Uh, you know, hearing rope snake, rope snake, rope snake. <laughs> he was taking a walk in the ashram and he, he saw one something lying there on the ground and he thought it was rope and picked it up. It turned out to be a snake, okay? This is, this is, this is the opposite of what happened. This is, what, this is the collateral damage of living in Vedanta ashrams for too long, okay? This is what happened. So, so like this, you see, when you see the rope, when you see the rope, you don't really see the rope. You see the, uh, you half see the rope and you don't know the rope. So you mistake it for what? Snake. This is a problem. This is Mithya part two. I see the snake, therefore what? It must be real. It is there. <laughs> I see it, therefore it must be real. I see it, therefore it must be there. And usually, the things that we see, this mithya part two, derives its raw material from the storehouse, the warehouse of the unconscious. Warehouse, you know, pun intended. Where is this house? Where is this unconsciousness, unconscious housed? This is a very important question. It is housed in the same antahkarana, antahkarana means inner instrument, mind, etc., in the same place where the darshan of the Lord takes place with the help of shraddha, bhakti, and jnanam, knowledge. So when you pursue self-knowledge with commitment, dedication, fervor, and devotion, then naturally, one senses this Bhagavan everywhere, starting in one's own heart. But for that Bhagavan to be sensed, there must be room. 
there must be room otherwise how will how will that bhagavan show himself herself not possible this is the, the second kind of mithya i see something therefore it must be there is a series of misperceptions series of wrong understandings series of fears and tears that ensue from the wrong understanding and as a result the heart is cluttered with very various and often unnecessary pursuits pursuits to gain some kind of a, a accolade in society pursuit to gain security pursuit to gain fame name and not that anything is wrong with these pursuits if they are if they are followed from a place of being centered and in moderation we are talking about some kind of an obsession to be loved to belong to be wanted to be valued to be told you are the best east or west to be constantly approved of to not be judged to not feel alienated from other fellow beings from the lord from the goddess from the truth of oneself so all pursuits come from this self ignorance which is again with that self ignorance morphs into the second kind of mithya and what shall we call it in english a subjectivity a subjectivity subjective perceptions that are smeared over the world over other jeevas and over the source of the universe ishvara as a result there is no darshan or the darshan is distorted that oneness appears far away because i am imprisoned in the bars of my subjectivity one is imprisoned and it's a it's a rank form of self sabotage there is a story told an ancient story in india this man who was a rich merchant he had three sons and during his later years he did not know whom to leave the wealth to he wanted it to leave it not equally to everybody because there wasn't that much but and he just wanted to leave it to one one of the sons and so he thought about it and put a test to all of them so he gave them each a house and told them to fill it up with something nice whatever the you know they wanted to fill it up with and then one month later he would he would come and inspect it and the three fellows the boys the young men went off to their tasks and he he told that whoever does this rightly will get my property and he you know and then when the appointed time came he went to inspect the house houses and in the first house he couldn't set foot at all he was a cotton merchant and the eldest son had bought bales and bales and bales of cotton and had just st stuffed the entire house with it the, the cotton was you know protruding out of the windows out of the doors out of the chimney out of the balcony <laughs> it was just a, it was a cotton explosion uh, waiting to happen and then the second son 
thought he was cleverer and he went and straight away bought fabric because he thought oh why stop at cotton let's let somebody else do the difficult work of uh, uh, thrashing the cotton out and removing the seeds and weaving the yarn and all these things i just buy fabric we can cut stitch and sell and then again there were rolls and rolls and rolls of fabric rolls and rolls and rolls of fabric of course i forgot to mention one small detail the the, the father had given each of them some money to do this He given them the house and money spend this money judiciously and to see what you can do and then you know so there was just rolls and rolls of cotton coming out of everywhere including the middle son's ears and then you know the 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 trader the man the father was, was uh, had hardly finished sneezing after visiting or i should say trying to visit the first house and getting allergic to all this cotton uh, the dust and then in the second house he just opened the door and a roll of fabric fell on his head and another and another and it there was so much clutter and in fact the all the fabrics rolled on to the road then it was the third son's turn and in fact what the third son had done was uh, he was not really clear what his father wanted him to do fill it up means what with what should i fill it up how should i fill it up where should i fill it up and then he thought so much money to just fill up a house that doesn't make any sense and so he gave and he found that some there were some people who were needing that money some people who were sitting outside the temple begging for food and uh, then they all just completely uh what should i say they all completely uh, got this money all the people the begging people in front of the temple got this money and then suddenly he realized oh no <laughs> he had been hard working he forgot all about the the time to do this and then uh, the, that the, the houses would be inspected on this day and so with the little money and time he had left he went and bought some incense from his mother he went and took a lovely ganesha image and he put it in the house you know and then from his elder brother <laughs> begged some fabric and then made it into curtains and put it in the doors and windows and swept and mopped the whole house very nicely bought some flowers and greeted the father asked him to come and sit on a simple mat that was there and of course he got all the property and the other two sons were irate they said we did this we went to the next town and bought all the cotton the said the first one the second one said that is nothing i went to the next next town and got all the fabric how come this fellow is this youngest one you have always been partial to and how come he is getting the money and not i not i neither i nor the my middle brother he is getting the money and the father simply said i told you to fill it up nicely and then i found that i there was no place for me to enter neither the first house or the the second house both of them uh, appeared to be calamitous to me and so therefore the third house i felt not only like entering but also staying this is you know this is an ancient story but i think it was the inspiration for a uh, you know not so ancient uh, tv show called hoarders where people people just you know have everything their house is full of clutter and then you know then they are uh, they, they 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 don't know where to go what hap what happens i first time i watched this show somewhere in an airport and then i almost missed my connection because it was so intriguing i was keeping on looking at it and so this holders show is just like that because i had all kinds of ideas this is what is happening here all this hoarding is going on big time hoarding and so in this particular show i watched they had not seen the family cat for a week it was somewhere in the house you know inside some box poor thing and then they had not even seen it 
so these people had collected so many things that they had uh, barely seen their children and their pets for uh, for almost a week that's why they called the tv station for help when they could not find their child and the cat and then uh, they you know then the, the even for the camera crew to make a room to go inside they had to do so much cleaning and then each time they moved a box you know 55 cockroaches and then you know 32 some other kinds of whatever termites and ants and everything were, were, were there and and then the family was extricated all the members counted pets included they were sent to a hotel don't come in don't interfere <laughs> don't interfere and then they got these big trucks because the things that were there were not even worth sending it to you know some kind of a goodwill salvation army no such thing they had to be sent straight away to a landfill they had to all be evacuated completely and then they fumigated the house and then they painted one or two rooms and brought them back ah so nice oh our house had this room we didn't even know that it was a three bedroom house we didn't even know that this we had forgotten that this bedroom was there how nice how wonderful how great how fantastic and they were given with a warning that the tv crew of this particular show would come any time and inspect so they were not allowed to clutter it like last time and this is exactly my friends what one has to do to the antakarana it is full of boxes of grudges boxes of pain fear sorrow which is called the unconscious which is formed from age 0 to 4 or 5 where the child keeps learning new things and the child also keeps dropping the trust from be, you know when a child is born it is totally helpless and that total helplessness cannot move cannot turn over cannot eat and drink on its own forget walk or talk this total helplessness is compensated by total trust complete trust the total helplessness is compensated by total trust whoever picks it up it it allows them to pick it up and this trust is just so full and and the child is in awe of whoever is taking care of it they can walk i can't even move they can talk they can do interesting things they must be god <laughs> this is what i'm you know they must be god because they are perfect in a way mother and father are you know associates of god i suppose because locally they are here to to be like the managing trustee of this child and then as the child grows up it says wait a minute they are not god at best they are odd g silent they are not god at all <laughs> what do you mean they are god you know the mother inconsistent father unavailable and then one day they say one thing and then whatever they promise they don't give and whatever they give we never wanted anyway this is who these parents are they themselves don't know half the time what they are doing how can they take care of me how on earth can they take care of me when they themselves don't know who they are and what they want and my teacher would present this very beautifully he would say like one day the child the two year old toddler sees a cockroach eek it doesn't know it's met a cockroach for the first time and in tropical countries the cockroaches are this big almost as big as the two year old and <laughs> the child is naturally frightened and runs to the mother and catches hold of her clothes ma look 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 what does the mother do the mother climbs on the dining table without the child the child is still left behind there to cry and either run away or fend for itself 
then the mother on the cell phone calls the father and the father doesn't even enter the room and says okay okay i'll call pest control <laughs> this is <laughs> this is what the situation is and each time something like this happens the child's trust drops 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 one grows into a callous untrusting adult no sooner than we see somebody coming towards us immediately we make conclusions what do they want <laughs> what are they going to ask from me i have to say no i cannot do this we make judgments we make all kinds of uh, assumptions and so this dropping of trust in the local mother and father has to be regained by discovering the mother and the father of the universe by discovering the infallible as discovering as infallible the mother and father of the universe that is the only way to come out of this and to prepare for this knowledge this is really the primary preparation that trust which was lost has to be regained in the brahma sutra towards the end there is one sutra that says that the person of knowledge is child like child like meaning spontaneous cheerful trusting where the defenses where these ninja defenses you know like this what is that mutant ninja turtles always on the offensive and defensive that is not there the person has stopped becoming a being a ninja no more ninja the person is just filled with one's own glory of being sat being one with everything there is nothing to prove there is for that matter nothing to disprove there is nothing to want there is nothing to gain there is nothing to lose there is nothing to accomplish there is nothing to get rid of this is like a child like demeanor not childish that's different and this child like demeanor is regained only through understanding discovering as infallible the mother and the father of the universe that is why it is important to see everything as sat and immediately go to the source of the sat which is the lord along with his shakti the goddess we don't have a problem whether we say lord or goddess it's one and the same she is he he is she they are one we are not two different entities from the standpoint of the maker we say he from the standpoint of the material used to the, to project this jagat the shakti used to project this jagat we say she because she is a creator he is a creator that's the only reason so this discovery that ishvara pervades me in the form of this body mind sense complex i am never away body is ishvara eyes are ishvara even the complaining mind is ishvara a mind that is that has got a heavy unconscious also ishvara in fact we cannot even blame the unconscious the unconscious is ishvara's creation ishvara srishti it is so that the child can grow up without being bogged down by all the pains and hurts for which it doesn't have the equipment the mental and emotional equipment to process that's why it all suppresses everything the child smiles its way through the hurts and grows up supposedly to be a functional being only after getting into a close relationship like a very close friendship or a uh, some kind of a marriage type relationship where there you know there is an expectation of a lot of trust the unconscious finally feels safe enough to feel the unsafety of its past 
it feels safe enough to un feel unsafe and what we call the inner child the truncated and the stymied reactivity comes out and that is when that is when it is an opportunity to heal the unconscious how do we heal the unconscious we heal it by taking these babies and putting them at the feet of the lord first and foremost give me some parenting skills <laughs> so <laughs> this is what you have to do <laughs> these are your children <laughs> this is resistance this is lack of trust shraddha this uh, you know this is fear this is sorrow or name all of them well, whoever sometimes new ones are born every day you can name them too get to know them name them and learn some parenting skills from you know from therapy you can do this from so many books that are written on the subject you can do this and through uh, uh, talks like these you can do this but you have to be in the place of the parent otherwise it doesn't work the first instinct is to give this inner child to babysit to the significant other <laughs> here you take it in the beginning maybe the other the significant others will accept because it is cute but then sooner or later their inner children are also there what are they going to do to, to that are you willing to babysit them maybe for a little while that's why every marriage has got what is called a honeymoon period every friendship has a honeymoon period after that uh, you know it, it doesn't work you have to be the parent because you are in the position of regaining this inner child's trust you have to tell this inner child i know you haven't been listened to i know you have been stuffed and stuffed and stuffed and i know you don't trust me and what will the inner child say yeah you got that right of course i don't trust you but keep at it keep at it practice pays off abhyasa pays off and slowly the inner child will reveal itself to you or rather i should say the inner children which are cluttering the the heart the mind which are blocking the view of bhagavan sitting right there all the time as you in you and uh, they have to be they have to be pacified you cannot remove them because it is ishvara's srishti but you can integrate them into the adult they grow up slowly with your help and you have to be in the place of being the mother and the father to them how to do that and then once having done that what kind of a vision awaits us we will see in the last uh, session in the uh, what is it now morning evening okay all right Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you.